is the Writer's Almanac for Wednesday. It's the 11th of May, 2022. It was on this day in 1812 the waltz was introduced at a dance hall in London, the first closed couple dance the English aristocracy had ever seen, men and women embracing one another as they were dancing. It's the birthday of the man who wrote, Come on in here, come on in here, Alexander's Ragtime Band, come on in here, it's the best band in the land. They can play a bugle call like you never heard before, so natural that you want to go to war. That's just the bestest band what am, my honey lamb. Irving Berlin, born Israel Berlin in Russia, 1888. Irving Berlin also wrote for his wife who had died, All alone, I'm so all alone, there is no one else but you. All alone by the telephone, waiting for a ring, a -a ring-a-ling. I'm all alone every evening, all alone feeling blue, wondering where you are and how you are, and if you are all alone too. Irving Berlin wrote more than 1,500 songs, including Putting on the Ritz, God Bless America, White Christmas, There's no business like show business. Irving Berlin, who said, after you get what you want, you don't want it. It's the birthday of the painter Salvador Dali, born in Figueres, Spain, in 1904. He was a surrealist, influenced by the theories of Freud, made what he called hand-painted dream photographs, distorted human figures, limp pocket watches, burning giraffes. He was a born performer, relished an audience, and he found that audience in America when he moved here in 1940. He was an unmistakable figure with a perfectly waxed, upturned mustache and always a cane and a cape. He was a master publicist, especially of himself, Salvador Dali, who said, in order to acquire a growing and lasting respect in society, it is a good thing, if you possess great talent, to give early in your youth, a very hard kick to the right shin of the society that you love. After that, be a snob. And it's the anniversary of the printing of the first book in the year 868. Wang Chia printed the Diamond Sutra, a Buddhist scripture, on a 16-foot scroll using wood blocks. It was discovered in Turkestan in 1900 among a thousand bundles of manuscripts walled up in one of the caves of the thousand Buddhas. Here's a poem for today by Peter Everwine, A Story Can Change Your Life. On the morning she became a young widow, my grandmother, startled by a sudden shadow, looked up from her work to see a hawk turn her prized rooster into a cloud of feathers. That same moment, halfway around the world, in a Minnesota mine, her husband died buried under a ton of rockfall. She told me this story 60 years ago. I don't know if it's true, but it ought to be. She was a hard old woman, and though she knelt on Sundays when the acolyte's silver bell announced the moment of Christ's miracle, it was the darker mysteries she lived by, shiver cry of an owl, black dog by the roadside, a tapping at the door, and nobody there. The moral of the story was plain enough. Miracles become a burden and require a priest to explain them. With signs, you only need to keep your wits about you and place your trust in a shadow world that lets you know hard luck and grief are coming your way. And for that, so the story goes, any day will do. A Story Can Change Your Life, a poem by Peter Everwine from Listening Long and Late, published by University of Pittsburgh Press and used by permission here on the Writer's Almanac. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch.